you know. Um, I'm Hank Greenberg, the state director for AARP in Maryland, and I want to thank you and welcome everyone to this non-traditional but wonderful celebration of the organization. Um, and it includes both the family members and the folks who have become our partners. They're part of our extended family, if you will. And they work, you work hard every day to ensure that people in the community have resources that they need and advocates that they are, that are by their side. And as you know, we would typically present these awards at our annual Andrus Award celebration of service in which we recognize outstanding accomplishments of our AARP Maryland volunteers. But in our pivot to the virtual world, like everyone else, and to prevent folks from staring at a screen for too terribly long, uh, we celebrated our volunteers last month via Zoom. And so now we're thrilled to hold this virtual celebration uh, in recognition of the organizations who came together under very trying circumstances uh, to continue the advocacy and outreach efforts on behalf of all of the 50 plus in Maryland. And while I'd love to see all of you in person, uh, give you a handshake, a hug, or an elbow bump, uh, we're all content knowing that we have this moment together to reflect um, and honor your achievements on behalf of the 50 plus here in Maryland. So we hope you're enjoying your gift that uh, we thought you could all use a little bit of calm in your own lives. And so uh, hopefully you've, uh, you've had a chance to take a look at that. As we reflect on this year though, I want you to know that your work matters now more than ever in the lives of the people that you serve. And the theme of our this year has been focus. So appropriate at a time when we all felt thrown off track your organizations uh, stayed focused and pushed through to continue serving the community. And for that, we thank you in a big way. And at this time, I have the honor of introducing our uh, AARP Maryland State President, Jim Campbell. Jim? Thank you, Hank. you, appreciate it, thank you. I too wanna to join in thanking Michael you know, in normal times, you could probably hear Michael at a lounge in Little Italy doing this on a Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday night. He, he's got a great following, does a great job there. So, uh, but these certainly aren't normal times. And if it was normal times, if you remember last year, we were in Ocean City. So uh, this year we're in our living rooms or den, den or whatever. But uh, it, the important thing is we are together and we are working for our communities. It's an honor for me to be here to, to celebrate with our community partners and community organizations, the work they've been doing in these challenging times to serve the citizens of Maryland. It's, it's really heartwarming to see the work that people are doing to kind of continue to serve in, in, in these difficult times. Um, and as you know, your efforts in partnership with AARP help to make us one of the most effective advocacy organizations in the state. And uh, we're a vital source of information referral for the 50 plus population. And we're one of the state's leading advocacy organizations with your help in representing the interest of our citizens at the state capitol or the nation's capitol. And uh, because of your help, we've taken an active role in a lot of issues this year. Some are really new to us that we weren't as that involved with in the past. And it's because of the, what's going on that we're taking this active role and adjusting to the times. Uh, we're, with our partners, we're advocate and leading on educating family caregivers on how to care for loved ones at home. We're leading the fight for affordable health care, and we've led the fight and continue to lead the fight for lowering prescription drug costs. We're leading the fight in Maryland for better care for those in nursing homes and assisted living facilities. And this, of course, is a high priority right now during the middle of this pandemic, because nursing homes and assisted living facilities are suffering and we need to address a lot of the discrepancies. We're also leading the fight on voting. Who would have thought voting would have been such a big issue this year in terms of uh, the uh, making it relevant and making it uh, uh, open. But uh, we led the fight here on an open process to make sure our citizens were involved and could vote. Leading the fight on protecting older citizens from consumer fraud, we've been doing that. And leading an effort to assure all residents are involved and counted in the 2020 census. So uh, it's been a long, 
difficult but fruitful year. And because of our partners, we feel like we've really accomplished a lot and we really appreciate your help. Um, and it helps to carry out the vision of our founder, Dr. Ethel, Ethel Percy Andrus, who said, the challenge is to live up to our better selves, to believe well of our fellow men and perhaps by doing so, help create the good we believe in, to experiment, to explore, to change, and to grow. And boy, have we explored and grown this year. Now I'd like to introduce what we're all here for, for really, the moment we've been waiting for, uh, introduce, uh, to hear our award presentation. I want to introduce George Denny, the Maryland Retired School Personnel Association, uh, association that's close to our heart because our, of our founder, Ethel Percy Andrus, was an educator. So, uh, and educators, of course, are facing a challenging time this year themselves with all that's going on in schools and uh, around the country. So we're really honored to have Mr. Denny with us today. And Mr. Denny, take it away. Thank you. Jen, can you guys hear me? Yeah. This is Jen. Uh, we got a little ahead on our script and I wanted to actually have Adrian play us a video from our oh. uh, director at the foundation, the AARP Foundation. Um, and congratulations to all of the folks on the phone. So before okay. we get started, Mr. Denny, I apologize to cut you off, but we're going to go ahead and hear a little bit from Lisa Marsh Ryerson. Not, not a problem. Thank you. We have no sound, Adrian. Share computer sound. Yes. There we go. Hi, it's Lisa Marsh Ryerson of AARP Foundation, popping in to offer deep gratitude to all of our Maryland volunteers. At AARP Foundation and AARP, we know that you, as our volunteers, are truly a national treasure. Know that we could not meet our vision of a country free of poverty without the support that you offer so many older adults in communities across the state. As I celebrate Thanksgiving this year, I'll be offering deep gratitude for you, for your commitment to ongoing service, for your ability to overcome the many disruptions throughout the course of 2020. I appreciate you, I value you. The team at AARP Foundation sends you a huge thank you for all you do for us. Thank you, Adrian. Okay, Mr. Denny, you go right ahead and take it away. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Jen. And thank you, James, for that introduction. On behalf of the members of the uh, Maryland Retired School Personnel Association, I'd like to thank you for this program this morning and for inviting us to participate. Uh, I'm happy to introduce and uh, recommend uh, Dr. Linda Limus, a member of the St. Mary's County Public School Retirees Association. She serves her community and uh, offers about 160 hours each month to her community. Uh, she was instrumental in establishing the first ever food bank in St. Mary's County called Feed St. Mary's Food Bank. Dr. Limus negotiated a five-year rent-free lease on a 3,000 square foot storefront and access grant funding to purchase a commercial walk-in freezer and refrigerator. This allows large donations to the bank. She promotes the food bank to service organizations, churches, school groups, businesses, and individuals soliciting food and money donations. Linda also coordinates the activities of local food pantries to ensure they receive donations from the bank to feed the almost 10,000 people in the county who suffer food necessities and insecurity and rely on food pantries to survive. Hundreds of volunteers stay motivated to help her encouragement with her encouragement. Dr. Limus also serves as a board member of St. Mary's Caring, a soup kitchen that feeds 2,500 people per month. Through St. Mary's Caring, she also assists the food the, uh, the Feed the Families program at a local summer vacation, I'm sorry, at, at a local uh, Title I elementary school, which ensures meals for students 
over holiday breaks and summer vacation. As a parent of an adult with special needs, Linda also works with the Center for Life Enrichment and Bay Community Support Services to encourage participation by the adult special needs community in the work of the soup kitchen. This provides more opportunities for her son and other adults with special needs. So it's my pleasure to again introduce uh, Dr. Linda Limas. Oh, there she is. Mute. You're on mute, Ms. Limas. Just the bottom left right here, uh, there should be an unmute button. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank you, George, for that introduction and to all of my fellow retirees. I am deeply honored to um, receive this award during this, especially during this very critical time in our history. Um, as you know, our country is in the midst of a pandemic. And our country is also in the midst of a food insecurity crisis. Even before the pandemic, approximately 40 million people lived in food insecure households. And that number is expected to increase during this time by 10 million. So it's a very critical time and there's definitely a need. Um, but you know, we are so appreciative in St. Mary's County and um, all over the world Human beings have a remarkable capacity for kindness and people do not want others to go hungry. And we are so appreciative of that. And we have witnessed that giving spirit in St. Mary's County with Feed St. Mary's. We opened um, on March 20th uh, at the onset of the pandemic. We canceled the celebration but we were able to do our first drop of delivery. We did not cancel food. And on that first drop, we delivered um, over 8,000 pounds of food to feed St. Mary's Warehouse in St. Mary's County. And just this past weekend, St. Mary's County and Feed St. Mary's and all of our participating partners, faith organizations, about 15 organizations joined us in distributing over 900 turkeys, Thanksgiving meals to families, uh, food insecure families in, in St. Mary's. And we are confident that um, we'll have that number of turkeys on, on, on somebody's table during this Thanksgiving celebration. Um, we started with three pantries. Um, by the end of this year, in three partner pantries, by the end of C December, that number will increase to seven. And at the beginning of next year, we expect to have two more joining us and the increase will go to nine. So we have been very fortunate. Uh, our county has, is supporting Feed St. Mary's and um, we are just thrilled with the work that is taking place in the county. So thank you for recognizing our effort Thank you to uh, fellow retirees, the St. Mary's County Retired School Personnel Association for this nomination. And thank you so much for helping us to fulfill our mission to alleviate food insecurity in St. Mary's County. So with that, I will say thanks, be safe and have a happy holiday. Dr. Limas, thank you very much for your work. Uh, thanks for reminding us about the hunger issue. It's, you know, you turn on the news at night and you see people waiting in line for hours just to get a, a meal. It's just, we really appreciate the work you're doing. Mr. Denny, thank you for that great introduction. We really appreciate it. Now we're going to go to Rose, we're our own Rose Hobson, another person that wears a hat like I do <laughs> with the uh, driver safety program. Good, good day, everyone. Thank you, Marilyn, for celebrating our volunteers on the driver safety team. I want to introduce, <clears throat> introduce to you Greg Harris. He's been a Maryland driver safety pro on our team since uh, 2015. Greg is an awesome DSP uh, driver safety instructor 
smart driver tech, car fit tech, car fit event coordinator. He has many hats, just like I do. His knowledge of application technology and computer software makes makes <clears throat> for a good um, addition to our team because he has the knowledge to do what we need to have done. He is a perfect, uh, can you hear me? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Sounded good, Rose, okay. sounded good. All right, he is the perfect addition as a member of the Maryland Driver Safety Leadership Team. He has the responsibility of keeping our driver safety database up to date and produces reports as requested. As a member of the leadership team, Greg gives his all. We appreciate his expertise and his dedication of service. He is also a very nice guy who is always willing to help when asked. For these reasons, Maryland Driver Safety Team feels that he is very deserving of the 2020 Andrews Award for the Driver Safety Program. He represents us all very well. I wanna say thank you, Greg. Thank you for being on our team, being a friend and always being there. Thanks to the Maryland State Office for all you do for the Maryland seniors. And I just wanna send out an open invite for anybody who wants to be a driver safety instructor. I'd like to introduce to you, Greg Harris. <laughs> Thanks for that glowing introduction, Rose. I appreciate it. And uh, if you don't know Ro Rose, she's a great person as well. She's, um, she's an inspiration to all of us in, in the Maryland Driver Safety Program. Um, when I was nominated, I, I uh, thought I should look up uh, some of the information I could get on Ethel Andrus and uh, noticed a lot of the statements regarding her career and her, her vision was to bring dignity to people of our age. And uh, at this point, I really wonder if she knew how influential that decision had been. But it seems that um, when I started this driver safety programs, um, I didn't really see the, the connection to the dignity. But after um, helping people and working with people, I, I actually recognize the fact that when you reduce uh, fear and, and give people more confidence, that is in fact uh, that vision of dignity. So um, I'm, I'm proud to be the, the recipient of the award and I'm thankful for the gift that volunteering has bestowed on me. And I'm inspired by my teammates who are de whose dedication and energy is relentless in their pursuit of the goals uh, for our Maryland uh, team. Uh, and they, they truly serve as an example of, of true selflessness. And I'm happy to continue to serve and to continue to help my fellow boomers uh, as, as they strive to be all they can be. Thank you. Greg, thank you for your work. You are a nice guy. She's right. Uh, we really appreciate all you do. Uh, and Rose, thank you for that great introduction. Thank you very much. Welcome. Welcome. I'd like to introduce now our uh, tax aid program. Uh, from our tax aid program, Ann Gavin, who's gonna make the award for the tax aid project. Ann, thank you. Can you hear me? Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Um, I've been a Montgomery, aid, uh, Montgomery County tax aid volunteer going into my 10th season. And I wanna tell you from my personal experience that Lynn Kinch, who is receiving this award, epitomizes effective visionary leadership. And she's selflessly dedicated when it comes to stepping up. Uh, Lynn joined the program in 2008 as a scheduler and then enthusiastically and progressively took on additional responsibilities, moving to be the administrator for our district, then becoming a counselor, adding responsibilities as a trainer, and when most needed, stepping up to be our district coordinator. She took on leadership of our program in 2015 at an important inflection point. Many of our longtime leaders were stepping down and the uh, tax layer software was soon to be introduced. Lynn's deep knowledge of our program led to positive changes in our organization and processes. Her perseverance and steady hand got us through the bumpy tax layer transition and her initiatives increased the size and the competence of our volunteer counselor corps. The buck always stopped at Lynn's desk and yet she always solved the problem. We volunteers knew she had our backs. She inspired all of us by her example and with her unwavering support. The strength of our program 
and the motivated involvement of our volunteers is a tribute to Lynn's leadership. In her last year as district coordinator, Lynn oversaw more than 125 volunteers and the preparation of over 6,200 tax returns wow. for Montgomery County citizens. She led this effort while also serving as a counselor herself. Her leadership was informed by her working in the trenches with us. Another hallmark of Lynn's leadership was her succession planning, which led to a smooth transition to Ginny Kiesewetter, our mm. current district coordinator. And now Lynn's supporting Ginny by spearheading our new virtual learning adventure as we head into training for the next tax season. And she's doing this with her usual thoughtful and strategic approach. When Lynn stepped down as district coordinator, all the volunteers in our program honored her contributions and expressed their gratitude for her leadership. So this award is a well-deserved recognition at the state level for all Lynn Kinch has done and continues to do to make the Maryland Tax Aid Program a success. Unfortunately, Lynn is not on the call today, but I know that she is grateful for this award and happy to continue to be able to serve tax aid clients um, on the training, on our training committee, an effort that she's leading, and as a tax counselor. And um, I'm sure she could express better than I can how much volunteering means to her. And but she probably wouldn't brag as much as I can about <laughs> how selflessly and tirelessly she has given herself to our programs. So I know she's grateful. Thank you. And thank you for the great presentation. Uh, you really captured what an outstanding leader Lynn, Lynn is. So we really, really appreciate it. And thanks for your work with the tax aid program. We really, really appreciate it. So thank you so much. That was wonderful. Um, our next uh, speaker will be Tammy Bresahan, our Associate Director for Advocacy. She's done a great job in Annapolis advocating for our interests. Tammy? Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, as Jim said, I am presenting an award to one of our partners that works with, uh, with us in Annapolis, helping us pass our legislative agenda and, and helping us keep a check on the utilities that you use, like your phone, your gas, your electric, and all of those things that come into your home. And now we are even working on um, high-speed internet. Um, and that is the Maryland Office of the People's Council. And for those of you that don't know, um, they represent us, they represent the ratepayer. And this is, embodies what I think about the Office of the People's Council. We believe that collaboration is not just an option to choose, but a necessity to strengthen the efficiencies and the effectiveness to tackle down of what we need to settle and generate a better impact for a better world. The Maryland Office of the People's Council, otherwise affectionately known as OPC, was created in Maryland in 1924, and not all states have this office. In the oldest utility consumer advocacy office of its kind in the United States, the People's Council is appointed by the Attorney General and the advice and the consent of the Senate and acts independently of the Maryland Public Service Commission and the Office of the Attorney General. The Office of the People's Council is the state of Maryland agency yet works independently to represent Maryland's residential consumers of electric, natural gas, telecommunications, private water, and certain transportation matters before the Public Service Commission, federal regulatory agencies, and the courts. Every day, the Office of the People's Council staff members addresses, address issues affecting the cost, the quality of service, and adequate supply of these utility services. As such, the Office of the People's Council advocacy touches the lives of every resident of Maryland, and that I can attest to. The OPC functions primarily as a law office employing a staff of 19 and retains expert consultants to provide technical assistance and expert testimony on your behalf. These consultants are highly qualified accounting, engineering, and economic experts who provide technical assistance. Meanwhile, because it's a state agency, 
the funding for the Office of the People's Council is in the governor's budget. However, the state's general fund is fully reimbursed through the expenses that the OPC receives. But more than just being a state agency or your People's Council, they are effective advocates in Annapolis. We are often side by side. You know, um, some of the attorneys in the People's Council have come and gone. But most recently, I work with Paula Carmody, Bill Fields, Fred Hoover on issues that keep your electric and gas rates and your telecommunications in check. This is sort of a bittersweet ending for the Office of the People's Council and fitting that they should receive one of our highest awards. Um, they're the, off the People's Council for the state of Maryland is Paula Carmody. Paula, since I've been at AARP since 2011, has been the People's Council. And um, she is a tireless, a fearless advocate. She has served in uh, a president of the National Association of State Utility Consumer Advocates. She's an ex officio member of the Maryland Energy Administration. And she has extensive experience working on consumer issues, especially with the Public Service Commission and the state legislature for which some of these rates can be blamed on the legislature for passing. And that is not any fault of Paula's or your friends at AARP because usually we are the only folks in the room holding the utilities accountable. She has a Juris Doctor degree from Antioch School of Law, and she received a Bachelor of Arts from McGill Cal University in Montreal, Canada. And um, Paula will be retiring at the end of December, and I'm not sure what we are going to do without her. I am not sure. Um, I know that she's leaving the Office of the People Council in good hands, and I can speak for our staff, especially Frank Green. Hank Greenberg, who introduced Paula to me, that we will miss her, but we know that we will be an effective member um, or the advocacy core in Annapolis fighting to keep your utilities in check. So it's with pleasure that we give the Partner of the Year Award to the Maryland Office of the People's Council. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Tammy. Um, I am so grateful to be able to accept this award on behalf of uh, my agency, the Office of People's Council. Uh, it is bittersweet that I'm leaving because this agency and the work uh, we do is so near and dear to my heart. Uh, I've been doing it for a long time uh, uh, over the past few decades. Um, but it really is on behalf of my agency, all of the hardworking attorneys, my administrative staff, all my support staff who have worked tirelessly uh, for the past 14 years to support me as the head of the agency to advocate every day for the, um, on behalf of, as Tammy says, 2.2 million households uh, across the state. And uh, we have in many ways been strong partners with AARP. Uh, Hank may not remember this, but back in 2007, uh, well, prior to 2007, I knew Hank at the Office of Attorney General when we were both there. And in 2007, uh, he invited me to address a town hall uh, for AARP members on issues related to retail competition. And here we are in 2020, and we are still dealing with issues related to retail competition and retail suppliers and uh, working in many ways hand in hand, and especially with Tammy down at the legislature to address uh, issues related to deceptive marketing practices uh, that we see every day uh, in the marketplace for our Maryland customers and that affect uh, vulnerable customers, low-income customers, and senior customers uh, in particular um, that are at the uh, receiving end of deceptive marketing practices. So it has been a long uh, thread through those uh, many years, uh, and I think it is sort of a testimony to the need for persistence and sort of tenacity, which certainly ARP 
uh, has always been out there um, with. We have worked together, uh, ARP and our agency, uh, as Tammy said, actually at the Public Service Commission uh, back in 2010 over smart meter uh, issues and lots of consumer protection issues. Uh, and we have worked down at the legislature and I've been so grateful to work personally with Tammy uh, on issues related to uh, wonky things like surcharges and uh, you know consumer issues. And Tammy is so right. Uh, during those time periods up through last year <laughs> in uh, the 2020 session, uh, there are only a few people in the room sort of really clearly advocating for consumers. And I have to tell you, it is ARP uh, that we have worked with so consistently. And I have to say personally, um, without ARP, without uh, Tammy in particular, in the room being such a strong advocate for, you know, on behalf of all the ARP members, on behalf of all of our households and working together, uh, we would not have held off sometimes as long as we, you know, the, <laughs> as long as we uh, were able to uh, some of the more uh, negative things uh, <laughs> that we saw coming down the pike. So I, I personally want to express my gratitude to Hank and, and to Tammy um, for all of the assistance. Um, obviously, um, this past year has been uh, a, such a such a tough one for so many households and uh, Dr. Limas, in particular, when she was talking about the, you know, the food insecurity issues, well, coupled with that uh, are the utility issues. I think in the news you hear, hear frequently about uh, issues related to the um, rent and mortgage issues and, and evictions. There has been less media coverage uh, of the related issues uh, surrounding um, utility bills and keeping utility service on and so many people falling behind uh, on their ability to pay their gas and electric bills. Uh, Governor Hogan back in March uh, instituted a moratorium which he continued but month by month through uh, the end of August. Uh, so uh, we knew that this was an issue that was, you know, it's like a train that, you know, keeps catching up speed uh, on, on the tracks. And we knew this fall, um, these issues were gonna come to a head with regard to bill payment. So I uh, am very thankful. We got a new director of consumer assistance in March, Brandy Neeland, and uh, with her assistance and working virtually, uh, we uh, got right on it to push out uh, information about uh, utility, the utility uh, moratoriums uh, on shutoffs, on energy assistance, on other resources that are available to people. We now have a network uh, for our alerts that is close to 700 uh, member kind of agencies and individuals to receive information from us. Uh, we delivered flyers through the food delivery network this summer, uh, trying to uh, get to the ground level to get information out about the availability of en energy assistance. We filed petitions with the commission at the end of June uh, to actually push and advocate for a continuation of the moratorium through actually the state of emergency uh, and for extensive um, time periods for payment plans and really pushing uh, for inclusion uh, for energy assistance. The commission granted some, but not all of our relief. And so we continue to work on these issues. We continue to work with the Office of Home Energy Programs, pushing for better access, better delivery mechanisms. Uh, we continue to send out our alerts. Uh, one of the newer things we're uh, doing, we're hoping to get uh, the first set out in December, are videos that will be available uh, through our web website and elsewhere on various issues. And I thank Brandy for uh, working with other member agencies to do that. So like many other organizations, uh, this has been a, a time where we have all needed to get pulled together, uh, help each other, assist, assist each other, and you know, try to uh, ensure that uh, through this period of health and financial difficulties, uh, that at least we can try to make things a, a little bit better. So I just wanna, you know, again, 
uh, on behalf of the Office of People's Council, on behalf of everyone that works in my agency, uh, thank you again for this wonderful, wonderful honor. As I said, it is bittersweet. It is a little bit hard for me to kind of leave all this work that we've done and leave my friends at uh, AARP. Um, but uh, this is a memorable uh, award, uh, much appreciated. And uh, thank you again to everyone. Well, Paula, thank, as a former legislator, I know how important your position is to uh, utility customers in the state. We are, you've done an outstanding job. We're really going to miss you, your experience, your advocacy. It's going to be a loss for the state. Uh, we wish you well. Thank you for your service over the years. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you. And maybe you can find time to get involved with AARP. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not, not surprised you're going to make a pitch? <laughs> lots we of could kudos really use you. Thank you so much. Lots of kudos in the chat, Paula. Take a look at the chat. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thank you. Hey, Tammy. And then we're going to hear from Natasha Remsberg, our uh, Experience Corps person. Natasha, done a great job with Experience Corps. And it's Megan, actually. Megan McCabe Marcel. Remember, we had to change oh. that one over. Okay. Hey there. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm Megan McCabe Marcel. I'm one of the volunteer uh, engagement specialists with Experience Corps in Baltimore, Maryland. We have a wonderful team of volunteers who oh, work with young students and helping them support with literacy and reading skills. Uh, Miss Macklin is our awardee this year. She's an amazing team leader that I've had the honor to work with over the past couple of years. She is incredibly dedicated to her students at Wood Home, working with them normally in person. And this year we're switching to virtual and she's been a champion of switching over to be able to continue supporting our students and giving them a little bit of stability and the much needed support with their reading skills as they deal with the pandemic as well. She uh, has an amazing relationship with the school teachers and the principal at the school she works with and goes above and beyond both for her volunteer teams and the students in the school. She every year has been running a book fair for them to help bring much needed funds into the school. And she is there extra days and extra hours to make sure that the, that book fair goes off every year and the kids have the chance to get those scholastic books and the school gets those much needed funds. She also helps facilitate the school pantry that happens to support the folks in the neighborhood and the students and families at school who need extra support for food insecurity. She is a wonderful ambassador for our Experience Corps program. And so the entire field team um, on behalf of the Baltimore Experience Corps team is very proud to award Miss Sally Macklin the Experience Corps uh, Andrus Award for this year. Thank you, Miss Macklin. Oh, there she is. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Um, when I received the email from Megan, I had to read it three times. I wanted to make sure that she sent it to the right recipient. <laughs> so after doing that, um, I knew about the award, but I didn't know the background of the award. So I, I researched and I read about um, Miss Ethel Perry Andrews. I, um, it would have been such a blessing to have met her. When I joined Experience Corps, I was in my 60s. Well, now I'm 70. <laughs> so in, in another decade, I am so grateful that the team in Baltimore City thought enough to me, thought enough of me, I'm sorry, to honor me by uh, receiving this award. It is such a tremendous blessing. I, um, I've had some wonderful teams over the years. And I remember my first year, my second, no, my first year, uh, the question was asked, why did I join the program? And my answer was, I did not want my obituary to read that I just retired from Verizon and that was it. And it was a period at the end of that because that is not the end of my story. So this has been such a blessing to me, uh, working with students who's old enough to be my great grandchildren and seeing my grandchildren, um, seeing me going out into the world daily 
and doing something to help others because I believe that that's my purpose in life, not to just expect things from people, but to give and give with a willing heart to just, you know, wherever you can, there is so much to be done. And if you just do a little, it'll make a difference in a person's life. I met some wonderful people along the way. I made some long, you know, lifetime friendships. Um, it's just, it is just, I am just so grateful. I am so grateful. I believe in, you know, food pantry because I think in a, living in the United States for any family to wake up in the morning and not have food in their homes, I just, it's just so heartbreaking. So whenever I can, I, you know, I give to that. I um, had a conversation with the principal about having a father and daughter dance. And because I believe that in a daughter's life, the father should be her first love. And the principal was like, make it happen. So that's a yearly thing. Um, the book fair, uh, and I say this a lot, we have generated over $10,000 for the school to make purchases. And that's one of my passions. I just cannot say enough about the staff in Baltimore City, the team leaders and the members. We do the very best that I can, that be, I'm sorry, the very best that we can. And I know this is a volunteer program, but some days it does, it does seem like work. <laughs> but even with that being said, we just move forward with it. You know, we move forward. So I am so grateful. Um, I just can't, I just can't say it enough. I was surprised, uh, but I am so grateful. And hopefully when I turn 80 in 10 years, <laughs> I'll still be, I'll still be doing this. I don't want to ever put a period at the end of my life until it's time for me to no longer live my life. I just want to just continue to give and give. And where there's a need, uh, I uh, assure you that I will always step up to meet that need. I probably could write a book about the students, but one of my funniest uh, conversation with the student is um, she, I, I went that morning, she said, you know, good morning. And she told me, she said, well, Miss Macklin, I know why you smell so good. Um, I said, well, why, what, why do you think I smell good? She said, because you go to church every Sunday. I said, well, <laughs> that's the first. I mean, it could have gone the other direction, you know? And I just, you know, and now she's in the fourth grade. And so every time I see her, I think, you know, I think about that story. So to all of you, congratulations to all the recipients. And thank you for those who participated in awarding me this beautiful, beautiful, memory, uh, which I will re be reminded every day, whether it's virtually or in person, to continue to do the very best I can in, this, in each student's life. Thank you, thank you so much. Ms. Macklin, thank you very much. You said at the beginning, you didn't know if you were the right person. You are the right person. You, you care about your kids, you love your kids. We really, you're an inspiration to all of us and you work thank in you. some of the most challenging circumstances. So some of the most difficult schools and we really appreciate what you do for our kids. Really thank, thank you. you so much. Megan, thank you for bringing Ms. Macklin to us. Sure thing, thank I'm you gonna so have much. Presentation now, so I'm gonna turn it over to Adrian. I think. Yes. Uh, no, I, uh, I mean, Jim, we were just gonna kind of close out while this played out, but uh, Thank you so much to all of our recipients, to all our award recipients today, and to Jim and Hank for, you know, emceeing this whole thing, and for Jen for putting it all together. Uh, we can give everybody, I don't know, a silent hand or something like that. That'd be great. But it's just a nice little slash to close this off and say thank you to everyone for what you've done. Okay. I just want to uh, sh uh, just a couple of final comments. We heard today for some outstanding folks people who are feeding the hungry, people who are helping us to learn to drive safely and stay safe on the roads, people who are helping us with our taxes, people who are helping us to make sure that our, our utility bills are, are in check so that the uh, utilities don't get away with whatever it is they want to be doing. And, and not only that, we're also helping to teach our kids. So these are just examples, but outstanding examples of the kinds of work that we're doing at ARP and amongst our friends. We're so grateful that you joined us today, and I want to say a hearty congratulations 
to each one of these most incredibly well-deserving people who've done a wonderful thing here uh, and a great examples for us. We needed this. We needed this. Whoops. You've been an inspiring group of people. And I want to say thank you. Yep. You make us strong. Thank you very much for being with us today. We love you. And we want to keep you going. And you, you're in your 80s. You're still going to be with us. Don't worry. We got you. We got you. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for all of our awardees. And thank you for all participating. Great day. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank you everyone.